For a 10 year old game, Armour 3, similar to the likes of Fallout 4 and Skyrim, never ceases to amaze us and keeps our playbase entertained with a whole variety of mods, scenarios and compositions. Minus all the Skyrim sexy stuff of course. Well, so far anyway, but anything's possible in this game, right? Imagine them janky armor animations. Anyway, back on mission. One of the latest offerings from the workshop is the Zeus Wargame mod, a RTS modification created by Jack the Viper. In the creator's own words, this is a Zeus overhaul mod that aims to bring a tactical wargame experience to Armour 3, with changes made to the AI and addition of context sensitive menus to give the player more control over his units. Now you're probably wondering what really sets this apart from something like say Armour Commander, a valiant effort in its own right. Well I would say that Armour Commander plays not too dissimilar to a traditional RTS crossed with something like the wargame series by Eugen. Jack's Wargame mod is more comparable to a mixture of, say, combat mission, close combat, and even men of war. You can fight over objectives, you might be conducting a supply raid with a ragtag FIA force, or you might even be on the hunt for insurgent cell leaders. Combine this with a supplementary module download available over at Jack's workshop, and anything is possible. So let's take a look at the basic setup here. I'm playing with one of the example scenarios made by the creator called Cordon and Sweep. Basically the objective is to squeeze the AO from multiple directions whilst blocking off any escape routes that the four HVTs may use upon discovering your forces. As you can see we have Alpha, Bravo, Charlie and Delta. Basically four platoons under strength which I'm assuming is to save on performance and we can safely say it's trying to represent a company level action. Selecting these units on the map view, we can see a circle or radius around that selected group. This represents a unit's radio range and information sharing. Its importance will be demonstrated very soon. Going in into our 3D Zeus view, you'll find most of the vanilla functionality disabled and instead replaced with unit cards or tooltips if you like and contextual based interaction menus. Until the mod actually develops more, these are mainly things like get in a vehicle, or resupply, or interact with a mission object. Let's jump back to the unit cards. In this example, we'll check on EOD from Alpha. Slowing the footage down, we can see that the current combat mode and associated formation, current speed setting, radio range, unit trait, in this instance the ability to clear spotted mines and other explosives. In addition, the unit card will also keep track of the number of grenades, mines, explosives and other equipment within the unit. If you've played any other tactical RTS worth its salt, you're probably already getting an idea on how things are going to interact with each other. Ok, so let's get a few simple commands done. I'll order various units to mount up and I'll get my sniper stroke forward observer team in a chopper and deployed to the AO. Simple contextual commands and a waypoint or two out of the way, we find our chopper hovering above the planned LZ. In its current form, the mod doesn't auto land, no, well, not to my knowledge at least. However, this is a good time to show you the basic commands located in the bottom right here. With a few clicks, we can set our desired height for the chopper. Obviously, we'll set this to zero. Other functions available here are dig in. Using the dig in function lessens the effect of suppressive fire or the chance to be pinned, and this also allows weapon teams to deploy heavy weapons such as mortars. Unit posture up or down, well you guessed it, sets the posture relative to the current one. So for example if you're stood up, you press the down key for crouch and again for prone, yeah, you get the idea. And finally we have the unit mode button, which you can switch between movement or combat. What's great about the movement mode is that, well in general as far as the armor gods will allow it anyway is that the units will obey movement orders over choosing to stop and engage targets. I'm not saying this is perfect, but I've had a good success rate, 90% uh, probably, and that's being conservative, so it's a really, really great job on this front. 
Right, so before we go into suppression, let's drop some ordnance. I have positioned my sniper team on a rise overlocking a enemy fighting position. Firstly, I hold down the shift key and check my unit has line of sight. This acts like the line of sight from Men of War, a reticule appears and it'll only hover over stuff that's in your view of that selected unit. So holding down the T button for extended commands, I go for fire support and request high explosive. The request is successful because A, the team has been designated forward observer and B, the receiving mortar team is within the radio range. The mortar team will take their time with this now, obviously a few moments probably just to simulate confirmation of map coordinates and fire missions and will eventually unload three or four rounds. The bombardment isn't laser accurate here, but I score a lucky hit. Although not direct, the shrapnel is enough to wipe out the enemy combatants. Honestly, just stress that you check the line of sight before attempting stuff like this, as one of my units looked like it had eyes on, but all it was looking at was a bit of the sliver of terrain in front of it. As in real life, there is no magical notification that pops up saying invalid position. The only notification you'll get in this case is either a target marker, or if you're not paying attention, a large red puddle where your observer was. And on we go to suppression and pinning. With a unit selected and a line of sight on the enemy group, we can contextually tell our unit to suppress, and the enemy on the receiving end will go to prone and be labelled as pinned. I've not really had enough time to determine the duration, but I have found heavier automatic weapons provide a longer pin. Whether that was my imagination or not, I currently don't know, so this will require further testing. Other things you may have noticed on the context menu is target, assault and group info. Starting with group info, this simply displays a enemy unit's traits. Target, well, as far as I can gather, is for when your unit is switched to combat mode, it will prioritize the selected target. And then finally, we have Assault. This is quite an interesting one. Your selected unit will attempt to close the distance with the enemy and block grenades. This can be your best friend or worst enemy. Usage of this button without four will result in the unit throwing themselves against the target and getting totally slapped. But, if you issue the order after placing some flanking waypoints for instance, you will get some really good results. It seems the AI will prioritise the user waypoints, then initiate the selected action. With a few minutes of practice, you'll be taking out emplacements in no time. So already, you can see this is building a basic gameplay loop as it were. The foundation for a lot of your attacks, like in real life, will be fixing the enemy by fire and flanking or assaulting with a, another unit. I have to say that I would expect this to play extremely well with a World War II setting. I remembered playing, was it Brothers in Arms back in the day? And it feels like a top-down version of that. So other functions on the more expansive T menu that I've not already covered are Occupy Building. Well, that's quite self-explanatory really, the AI will attempt to occupy the given building. Smoke screen, units will deploy smoke grenades or canister by vehicles. Explosives, has a submenu for units carrying such ordnance and options relating to that particular subject. Then we have the look at command. This can be really useful if your unit is in movement mode and is more or less hidden, such as a group on Overwatch, for example. It'll have them face the direction on which you open the menu, and you basically have your unit ready for when you press that combat mode button. And it's also very useful for covering likely routes taken by enemy QRF. Oh, did I mention most of the basic functions have associated hotkeys allowing for swift commanding? and that some scenarios can be played in multiplayer with friends heading up friendly platoons or even on the opposing force. What about the ability to play single player with a 0.2 sim speed? Not quite pausing and issuing orders, but damn close enough. But for some, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. 
You'll probably realise at the moment that all enemy units, bar the creator's place QRF forces, are actually visible. This can be immersion breaking for some, but after further reading this is actually a design decision to reflect information gathering and recon capabilities of modern armed forces. All seeing eye or not, you're still going to have to analyse the terrain for the best possible approach. So it doesn't really eliminate all the difficulty. If anything, it actually encourages the player to zoom down and have a look at the enemy position. Kind of like every enemy emplacement is its own separate puzzle. However Jack, if you are watching this, is Fog of War possible? And if so, could it be implemented as an optional parameter in the lobby? I think the mod has the potential to support more historical conflicts, and combined with a setting like Fog of War. Whoa. Wow. Sorry, I'll, I'll stop drooling now. But you know what? For an initial release, there's a lot to like about Zeus Wargame. And with the workshop page stating that there are updates in the works, I think you should be one, playing and creating stuff for this right now, or at least two, keeping a very close eye on its progression. Anywho, it's good to be back with a fully fleshed out video. I can't even remember the last time I voice graced or grazed your ears, but hope you've enjoyed this little showcase. And good news, I've actually got another showcase in the works right now, so it won't actually be too long until the next installment. Until next time, Armaholics. Bye!